Hi, my name is Shireen. I am a mum of two daughters, a 12 year old and a two year old. I'm also a black woman living here in the UK. Earlier on this week, I watched a video of Amy Cooper and her dog and how she used her position of privilege to threaten a black man who was bird watching. I watched the video a few times. I didn't really understand why I was watching the video a few times, but I did. And I put the video down, put my phone down, carried on, like whatever. But the video was playing on my mind. Now this isn't about the injustices that have been going on and continue to go on in the US. It's me reflecting on my position. It caused me to think about my experiences of being a black woman trying to progress my career in the corporate world, of being the only black face when I step into conferences, the only black, black face on a board, the only black face in a business. And thinking about situations that I've seen or that I've experienced where I never spoke up. I mean, behind the scenes, I might have talked about why that wasn't fair. That was out of order, like really out of order. But never really used my voice publicly to share not only what was happening, but also my personal experiences, my feelings, my thoughts and what it is to be black in the UK. Now I was born here, my mum is Jamaican and my dad is from Guyana. So Caribbean blood, Caribbean culture is part of my culture as is being British. But make no mistakes, being black even today is tough. Because we don't have the opportunities that non-black people have. Spaces are not always welcome or do not always make us feel welcome. We don't have the opportunities to really share how we really feel about certain situations. And some people would look at me and you know, I've got something to say about absolutely everything. Everything, I've got something to say. And they go, oh, Shireen's not talking about it. Can't be that bad. Because if it was that bad, Shireen would be talking about it. But the reality is like many, many black people in the world of work, in society, we're very conscious of the precariousness of our position, right? We're very conscious of the fact that we know that in some businesses, when you are the only black face, you will be the only black face, meaning they are not going to hire another 10, 15 or 20 people who look like us. It just isn't going to happen. We also know that when we apply for a job and we interview, if the person who did the job before us was black, and in any way, shape or form, they did not perform well in that job, we would not be hired. But like, I don't care what anybody says, like this is the reality and we all know this. So what that means is when we do get those jobs and we get those positions of authority, whatever that means, whether it's, um, you know, head of department, director, whatever that is, position of influence, right? We're so conscious of what it takes to get there that we don't want to rock the boat. The saying don't bite the hand that feeds you is there for a reason because actually we use those same phrases, those phrases are used to us, but what that means is don't upset the apple cart because just remember who pays your salary, just remember who pays your bills. So when you know that your position is tentative, what it means is that you are less likely to speak out, lest you be accused of playing the race card. You are less likely to speak out 
because some might say, well, you're just saying that because you're black. You're also less likely to speak out because anytime you talk about anything to do with race, people feel uncomfortable. And we reinforce inadvertently, like I know I have, keeping that whole conversation um, and how we feel under wraps. Because let me tell you how it played out for me this, just this week, just this week. So I know I've been feeling a little bit off with this all. You can tell, you only have to look at my LinkedIn post. I've been on one for the last few days. And I know, like I'm really, really clear that some people would have gone, gone through my post and thought, oh, this is not like Shireen. She's normally so bright and bubbly. Look, she's normally like posting, you know, whatever I'm posting about, uh, HR stuff, tech stuff. Got my fabulous podcast with fabulous guests talking about some great stuff. Got great people writing for HR Rewired. That's what I normally talk about. I talk about what's going on in the business world, what's going on in HR, what's going on in technology, how we should all be helping people to fulfil their potential because that's one of the things that I massively care about. And then all of a sudden, here she is posting about what it means to be black here in the UK. Okay, but maybe that's just a one-off. Oh, look, here she is again. She's posted a second time. This time, she's included a Korean gospel group who are fabulous. Oh, but a third time she's put... Oh, no, 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 no. She's clearly on a black mission, so I'm going to unfollow her. Now, some people have unfollowed me. That's fine, I know this. Some people... Mm, probably didn't want to like it or comment or engage because that's like, it's almost like political and you can't really be seen to be engaging in political. But my counter argument is this is about humanity and this is about people's lives. People being attacked, people being threatened because of the colour of their skin. That's not politics. That's not something for social commentary. In the same way me doing this video and opening my newsletter with this and not some bright and breezy article about remote working or culture or um, furlough or, you know, what the government is going to do to reanimate the British economy. I'm very well aware that even just by talking about this, I am threatening my own position. But I'm going to do it anyway. Because the reality is, just like the article that I mentioned um the US Navy SEAL, who talked about when you're a person of integrity, um, and that's not a judgment on anybody else, but this is about when there is something that really matters to you, and when this is about your values, if you feel in any way, shape or form that what you are doing, so I had to um, counsel myself almost, that by me not saying anything about this meant I was actually compromising on my integrity and I knew this was the case because before I wrote the LinkedIn post I couldn't sleep which is why I wrote the LinkedIn post because it was really sitting on my soul I was and just the last bit that I will say is that it can't be just for black people to be the ones commenting and posting it cannot be for us to explain how it feels to be a minority. Because the second well-meaning and well-intentioned that you ask somebody like just, you know, like, what can I do? What can I, it is not our problem to solve on our own is the point that I'm making. You know, and I have to look at myself in the mirror and say, well, what are the things that I do that can help make somebody else's experience in work, in life better. By me not saying anything, there are people who right now could maybe do with my voice or maybe somebody thinking differently because they've heard me speak. So that's why I'm speaking. Not for the people who only like to hear the bright and breezy Shireen. I'll be back next week or when I feel like it. But this is really important because we're talking about people's experiences. I'm thinking about my two daughters. I'm thinking about my brother as a black man, thinking, God, it's not even about, you know, trying to be safe when you walk at nighttime. This is about daytime. What can happen to you as a black man anywhere in the world 
where you are in a minority is really, really scary. And I guess I've been so conscious of not being the black person who makes people feel uncomfortable with my blackness by talking about it. And I'll tell you how that plays out. How that plays out is when people call me as they have done all of the week and you know, I've had lots of conversations, Zoom or whatever else it is. When they say to me, like, hi Shereen, how are you? I say, I'm fine. Like, oh, I'm good, you know, busy, you know, oh, yeah, busy, busy. But honestly, what I really wanna say is, A, I'm not fine. Right, B, when I saw that video of Amy Cooper, what I was thinking to myself is, th this was like, I can read all the history books, and I, I do struggle with reading books about slavery, I'll be completely honest, because I just, I can't. But when I saw how she reacted, I thought, is, is this what it was like for my people, not so long ago, when it was felt that they were stepping out of line? Is this what it was like? Is this is how inferior they were made to feel? And like, that's the bit for me that I thought. So when people say to me, like, we've we've made so much progress. Yeah, maybe we have in some ways, but kind of maybe we haven't. And we can't have made the progress because I'm not talking about that. So when you say to me, like, how am I doing? I'm not going to tell you about that. That's how I'm feeling. I'm also not going to tell you the, the, like, the hurt and disappointment that I feel when there are many organisations who have hired heads of diversity and inclusion, VPs of DNI, um, they talk about you know the importance of inclusion and diversity, and we've got people from all over the world, and we've got all these cultures coming into our business, and those same leaders have said nothing. It hurts me when I see organisations who are running webinars and panels on inclusion and. Um, culture and helping and creating environments to help people be their best and they too have said nothing now I'm not an inclusion expert of course but I do recognize the value it brings because every time that I talk about inclusion and I talk about people fulfilling their potential what I'm really saying is make it easier because my experiences were more of a challenge so if I had my time again, maybe, if I had somebody like Shireen talking about this sort of stuff, my experience might be easier. These are the things that I really want to say when you say, hey, how are you? But I can't and I don't. And I don't because I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. And therein lies the problem. The burden is always on us black people to not make people feel uncomfortable because our presence sometimes makes people feel uncomfortable. If we get a little bit too animated with what, what we've got to say, it makes people uncomfortable because they feel like we're being aggressive. I've been told that I'm, I can be intimidating, even before I've even said anything. Because of my height, because of the directness when I communicate, I can be very direct, I know. So the burden is on me to tone it down. The burden is on me and my fellow black community members to tone it down so we are accepted. And we know, like we wish life was different, but we know, like we cannot bring all of ourselves to work. We cannot bring all of ourselves um, to society because to do that means we are reducing our opportunity and Lord knows we have fought really hard just to get to where we are and I am massively conscious like please don't don't get it twisted I'm really conscious that just by doing this and by talking about it there are some people who maybe wanted to work with me are probably going to say no 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 because I don't want to be associated with anything black I don't want to be associated with anything controversial but what I will say is that there are people dying, there are people being threatened, there are people not having access to opportunity, all because of the colour of their skin. And at the moment, the corporate landscape, with a few exceptions, is one of silence. So I just want you to hear this with, you know, without any prejudice, with an open mind. 
and I, like I don't even know what to tell you like what to do differently but if nothing else like forget me like I'm fine I'll you know I'll be cool my partner's Estonian he's got to hear this every day but if you have a black person in your business and you are not talking about this with them and you are not talking about how this has made you reflect as a leader about how you run your business and how you create a psychologically safe place for your employees to be. You are failing your employee. You cannot be talking about mental health, um, protecting the environment, um, you know, uh, making sure that people have food to eat on the back of pandemic and not talk about this because this is about people being killed being threatened and some people in society not everybody abusing their position of privilege that society has continuously reinforced to oppress other individuals that is not politics so i will i will include some links of some research um and some great articles you know because i'm still learning even as a black person right i still learn i'm still learning about what i can do differently but I care about this so much that I've not slept properly and I'm still trying to do, I'm still trying to show up and be Shireen, right? I'm still trying to do all of those things, but honestly, like it's tough and I think it, it, it's tough because of the silence. Like it kills me that only black people are talking about this and posting about it and writing articles and just, you know, like an outpouring of grief almost. Why are we the only people doing this? You know, it kills me that for the post that I wrote, the first post that I wrote on LinkedIn, pretty much I spent all day and most of the night engaging with messages from people who'd seen my post and said, Shireen, thank you for writing what I couldn't even articulate point one, but honestly, like I didn't even write it because they were so fearful of what would happen and how they would be perceived that they couldn't say what I had to say. So you know what I said? I said, I got you, don't worry. I got you, I'm gonna say it anyway. So this is the environment that we're in. This is diversity and inclusion and life. And if you're not talking about this, if you're not trying to think about what you can do differently, then it doesn't matter how great your, um, you know, your shareholders report looks like, it doesn't matter how much that you talk about the importance of inclusion. If you are not A, practicing what you preach, but B, stepping up and going, okay, this is how it makes me feel according to my values, then my friends, you're not part of the solution either. So in the nicest way possible, what I'm trying to say to people is you need to pick a side. And you need to make sure that for all the rhetoric, because if you're not commenting, if you're not trying to reach out to other black people that you have in your business or that you know in your network and just say, like, how are you? And just listen, because sometimes you just have to listen. I'm not expecting you to fix anything but I kind of do want you to think about what you can do differently because we've been trying to do this on our own for decades. And you can watch videos of Malcolm X, you can watch videos of Martin Luther King, you can look at, um, watch Michelle Obama in Becoming and some of the things that she's talking about. Let me tell you, things haven't changed that much, but we cannot do it on our own. So at some point, we need allies who are just going to go, do you know what, this is what I've got to say, this is what... I'm committing to do as an individual, as a human being, as a father, as a brother, as a cousin, as an uncle, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do as a wife, a mum, a girlfriend, a sister, a niece. This is what I commit to do differently. And in the same way that I had to think, like for at least 10 minutes, whether or not I should do this. I had to think for a minute whether I can post this on LinkedIn. I had to think for a minute whether I start this newsletter by talking about integrity and talking about how I'm feeling about what's going on in the States. Like I had to think, because 
I know there's going to be a cost to myself, but that's fine because honestly, I just need to be able to sleep. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, and I hope with an open mind and I hope, you know, I might not have been as articulate as I probably normally am, right? Because I'm a, you know, a little bit in my feelings a little bit. But I hope you hear the intent of what I'm trying to say. And if nothing else, it's encourage you to do differently and think about how you challenge within your business and think about how you can make a difference within your community and think about how you can make sure that you're not just talking a good game, you know?